benefit from the new power supply agreement with Clico, hammered out during their lengthy settlement talks. The question is, will it be in the form of rebates or guaranteed savings over time? The new deal would save ratepayers at least $60 million over the next 13 years. The city would get $29 million up front if they agree to let Clico use the DG Hunter power plant reserves. The city council has their work cut out for them deciding how to use the money. Mayor Jacques Roy gave us an example of how the complex problem will be in deciding how to divide up the settlement. If 78% of the folks that would be rebated are businesses, then that means the big boxes, Cabrini, all of the, the mall, they're going to get a huge amount of this. That's going to cause a lot of consternation with residents. But they're going to argue it, that's fair. And if you said, well, we're only going to rebate residents and not commercial folks, uh, you'll be in court again, but it'll be, <laughs> there'll be another case that comes up. There will be two public hearings where customers can question city council members. They'll be on the 23rd and the 30th of this month at 5.30 p.m. in the city council chambers. In other city council news, the seating arrangements for council meetings will be a little different from now on, now that the new city council is in office. Tonight at 6, I'll tell you about the changes. Dale, back to you. All right, thank you, Joel. See you here at uh, 6 o'clock. Appreciate it. Customers. Dale, Diana, Alexandria utility ratepayers will benefit from the new power supply agreement with Clico that was hammered out during their lengthy settlement talks. The question is, will it be in the form of rebates or guaranteed savings to their bills over time? The new deal would give ratepayers at least $60 million over the next 13 years. The city would get $29 million up front if they agree to let Clico use the DG Hunter power plant reserves. The city council has their work cut out for them, deciding how to use the money. Mayor Jacques Roy gave us an example of how complex the problem will be, deciding how to divide up the settlement. If 78% of the folks that would be rebated are businesses, then that means the big boxes, Cabrini, all of the, the mall, they're going to get a huge amount of this. That's going to cause a lot of consternation with residents. But they're going to argue it, that's fair. And if you said, well, we're only going to rebate residents and not commercial folks, uh, you'll be in court again, but it'll be, <laughs> there'll be another case that comes up. There will be two public hearings where customers can question city council members. They'll be on the 23rd and the 30th of this month at 5.30 p.m. in the city council chambers. In other city council news, the seating arrangement for meetings will be a little different now that the new city council is in office. The area usually reserved for the mayor and his administration is now a a occupied by the city clerk Nancy Thales. This means that the mayor and his staff no longer have an open mic during meetings. If that's the way they uh, want seating to be where we're no longer up there and we're in the room somewhere else, uh, I think that our job is to advise the council, give them the best information we can, work with them the best that we can, and no matter where I'm sitting in a room or whether I'm allowed in the room, uh, I'm going to be able to do my job. I called several city council members today about why the mayor's seat was taken. I spoke with Council President Myron Lawson, and he told me the changes were made so that council deliberation could be done more efficiently by having the city clerk closer to their offices. Councilman Chuck Fowler told me there wasn't a vote or a consensus on the matter. He doesn't agree with it, and he thinks it's wrong. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Joe. We'll have more, of course, coming up tonight at 10 on Nightside.